Hello guys, welcome to another unfiltered board game review. Today's game is Francis Drake. It plays three to five players, 14 and up, for about 60 minutes. This is a game about setting sail to the new world and procuring your supplies. Before we do that, the game consists of three rounds, two parts each. The first part is gathering your supplies. The second part is doing your, your journeying and exploring and conquesting. Now, you're going to want to get the most victory points by the end of the game and let's look at the game so here we have the setup board setting up this game is the hardest part with the millions of pieces that come with it this game's order is determined by a blind draw random however you want to do it now here's the first part of the game in turn order you're gonna place your your tokens and in this case crew you're gonna get two crew pieces you're going to place them on your ship's log. As you progress around this board, you can't go back. So make your decisions wisely. When you reach the investor tile, you're going to have the choice of turning in your investor to give up the four victory points that you start with and get one of the effects on the card. When you reach the end of the dock, you get one of a supply, a crew, or a gun. And then you are queued in line to leave. So, first person to reach it gets to go first, and so on. And once everyone has reached the end of the dock, the next phase of the game begins. So, when you start the, the next phase, you're going to want to make sure that the voyage marker is on the appropriate thing. All of the tiles are placed out as shown. Now, three things are going to happen. The player who gets, who's got the Admiral and the Governor tokens they're going to be able to draw the pieces. If not, these are all done randomly. And what you're going to do is you're going to be able to look at them and put them down however you want. The Admiral gets the ships. The Governor gets the land units. Then the player who has the Golden Hind, who got it from the supplies phase, will get to place their mark. And the final thing is you mark how many supplies each player got from one to four. Green got one this game, red and blue got four. So that is the zones that they will be able to travel. So the rest of this phase goes down like this. In turn order, each players decide where they want to place their tokens. You want to do that face down. Each of them has a number representing the order that uh, you set sail. You can only, each player can only put one color on a, a particular place, but in any given zone, you can visit as many times as you want. Now, one thing to note is that the red player had the ghost ship, the ghost ship allows him to place last, and he also, once all of these are placed, reveals it and it goes away. Nice little bluffing technique there. Now, let's go ahead and resolve this phase. So, we're gonna flip over all of these at the same time. Now, only a certain number of players are allowed to land on each spot. Since blue has the first turn, he arrives first. Now we have a tie here for second, since they both picked second, so it's going to be resolved in turn order. Red had the red sailed first, so they arrive first. Now, for these tiles, when blue gets here, they can pick whatever resource they want. Everyone starts with one of these, which is a trade. You're, he's going to go ahead and pay that, and buy the indigo. That's very valuable. That'll come in handy at the end of the game. The rest of these will go ahead and take the other trade supplies and it'll go to theirs for each the cost of the purple token. Now here we have a fort and a village. These are acquired. Village only takes one crew. He gets one victory point and since he was the first person here he gets the silver. For the forts it's a little bit more complicated. You flip over the tile it reveals that it costs 0 plus 2 units, so there's that. Two cannons also to overcome this. And then 
he also conquers that and gets the silver and the six points of victory. Now, if players went beyond the first zone, they would encounter galleons. To fight a galleon, it plays exactly the same, except you just use guns. The only difference is you have to have bought a galleon while you were at the ship, uh, the shipyard. Now, for each conquest you do, villages, forts, and galleons, you're going to move the corresponding marker and you get score points for each different type of conquest. You're going to want to do as many types of conquests as possible. When you're done, move the voyage tracker and the next turn is going to begin. Everything is reset. If you're playing beyond the, or you're playing the expert version, you're going to go ahead and shuffle up these tiles. If you're playing the beginner version, just go ahead and leave them as shown. This is set up for the three players. You can tell by the light coloring on it. If this was set up for more, it would have the darker coloring. So, after that round is done, at any point during, during their explorations, a player can decide to come back early. The first two players back get two and one respective victory points. If you set up, you're going to continue going around and placing these tokens. First person there gets the first value, second person there gets second value, and you can't revisit any ones you've already placed on here. We have this beautiful bank board here where you keep all of the excess supplies. At the end of each round, all of the stuff's going to come back here and you're going to start based on based on what you want from the new uh, your new supply run. We have your ship's log over here. Once you buy the things from the bank, you're going to put them on here. This guy had a very good adventure. He acquired tons of different trade goods. That's going to come in handy at the end of the game. We have the investor cards here. These investor cards can be traded in when you reach an investor tile. You're going to be able to have the choice of upgrading to a galleon. You're going to need those to fight the, the galleons on the board. You can get one gun and two crew, or two crew and one gun. At the end of the round, you're also going to take these your spoils of war, toss them in your chest so your opponents can't see. Those are also worth victory points at the end of the game. If you buy a galleon at any point, you just swap it with the frigate that's on the board, and that'll be your new representation. After three rounds of gameplay, the game is concluded. You go ahead and count up your, your gold, jewels, and silver. You count up your sets of trade goods, and all of the victory points you've already had. Whoever has the most wins. Now I'm going to tell you what I think about the game. Michael enjoyed this game so much, he decided to pop in and tell us what his thoughts on the game. Oh yeah, gameplay of this game is magnificent. You really do feel like you're sailing the new world, going throughout and collecting trade goods, fighting other like battleships and forts and towns, acquiring all these resources. Uh, and there's so many different ways to win. How do you feel about the gameplay? Absolutely, the gameplay is spectacular. You, know, you look at this game and it looks so scary, but it's actually not. It's actually very simple. Yeah, when I first saw this game, because this game is a huge box with a ton of stuff in it. And there's even more. There's expansions to this game. It's big. And I just thought, oh my gosh, this game is going to be a monstrous game to get through. But I heard so much good things about it. And they are... They are within reason. It's well merited, yeah. Yes, definitely. Um, all the different things you can do on your turn, yet still very, very simplistic in manner. It's it's a beautiful style Euro game where you're going around selecting the different things you want. Do you want crew or cannon? Do you want to get trade goods? And all these different things give you different amounts of points as well, yep. and different different sets as well. Oh, it's great. There's three different turns, obviously, like we were talking about before. And all throughout all three of these turns, you could decide to do different things on those turns. You could always be the battler, or you could just do a big mix of things. Yeah, when we played, the game flowed really well. You know, there wasn't a lot of downtime. We were just, it was just played very nice. Yeah, the player boards are really nice as well. Uh, the big secondary player board is nice to see all the different locations of all the different pieces you can get. Uh, there's also a bunch of cool things like the queen and the captain, which we didn't talk about too much, but they do different things like allowing you to place the ships on the board, and you will know certain things that other people won't. As well as the ghost ship, that was a really yep. cool one too. That's a great one. Nice little added bluffing mechanism to a Euro game, so very, very well done as well. I like the round tracker, I like how they added components. They didn't even need to add certain components, and they did it anyway, yep. just because it's so nice. Adding like a turn tracker with this little brown ship is great. The barrels that mark supply is awesome. You know, I, I, I have really nothing bad to say about this game. I, this is, for me, this is, for as a Euro, a 10 out of 10. I have no problems with the game. Uh, it 
flow was magnificent, the style, the art, everything about this game was really, really good. Yep, fantastic. Yep, so that's what I got to talk about with this game. If you're interested in checking out Francis Drake, check it out in the description below. For both of us, a 10 out of 10? Yep, definitely right. 10 out of 10. All right. Thank you for watching another board game review by Unfiltered Gamer. Check out our videos on our site if you liked it. Check out our, our website, unfilteredgamer.com, with blogs, giveaways, and our Kickstarter list. Check out our affiliate sites, Everything Board Games, Devitos, The Giveaway Geek. Thanks, and see you guys next time.